Now, the former US ambassador to NATO, Kurt Volker, described Yevgeny Prigozhin's march on Moscow in June at the beginning, as the beginning of the end of Russia's war on Ukraine. Well, fast forward two months, and the Wagner boss now confirmed by Russian authorities to have died in that plane crash last Wednesday. The slow but steady war in Ukraine, of course, rumbling on. The Kremlin has denied killing Prigozhin, saying Western intelligence assessments of Putin's and potential involvement are an absolute, quote, lie. So what now for Russia, Putin's credibility and the future of its illegal involvement in Ukraine? Please say we're joined by the man himself, Kurt Volker, former United States ambassador to NATO and special representative to Ukraine. Kurt, thank you for making time for us and a busy time for you, I'm sure. And what do you make of those comments now from two months ago when you said we were going to begin to see the end? We saw that failed mutiny on Moscow by the Wagner troops yeah. and now we see a, a dead Prigozhin. Well, the reason I said that, and I stand by it, is that what we're seeing is the bubble popping in Russia. The narrative that Putin has been trying to tell people about the war, Prigozhin took on directly. Said it was a mistake to go in, said the war is going badly, the conditions for the soldiers are terrible, and he was marching on Moscow and he was welcomed in uh, Rostov, in Voronezh, and then negotiated an exit uh, for a time being. But it was clear that Russia was beginning to turn on itself. And that, I think, is what we saw now just the other day with his assassination as well, that this is the Russian state tearing itself apart or the actors within it, Putin, Prigozhin. Imagine shooting down an aircraft just outside your capital city in order to kill one of your rivals there. Um, this is not going well in Russia. And it's ultimately Russia's change that's going to cause an end to the war in Ukraine. And it depends what sources you read, how overly optimistic you are, that uh, sentiment is changing in Russia. Obviously, they only get given what they're given by the state in terms of information. So very few people actually believe Putin was behind the killing of Prigozhin, which is stunning to us to think about. But it's very much the case there well, with the if, state if media. But if you're asked, if you're asked on the street by somebody, do you believe Putin killed Prigozhin? Right. Prigozhin? What are you going to say? What are you going to say? What are you yeah. going to say? Absolutely. Now, how do you think this changes the way um, the situation plays out with Ukraine, but most notably, uh, calls for, for NATO to accept Ukraine or Ukraine to join NATO. You were, you know, a former representative mm -hmm. to NATO for the US. Your position on it has been very clear. Other people say it will just agitate further. Well, I don't think we have a choice at this point. Uh, I know we're not quite there yet, but Putin has declared that Ukraine doesn't exist as a nation, a people, an identity. He's trying to wipe out an entire European country. And he has explicitly said he's trying to reestablish an empire. Uh, he's compared himself to Catherine the Great and to Peter the Great, an accumulator of Russian lands. So we're not going to have NATO able to provide security for Europe with Ukraine out of it mm. because war will continue. So the only way to actually lock down Europe again is to have a clear, hard line of deterrence so that Russia doesn't attack anymore. And that's going to be with Ukraine in and all of these countries in gray zones having to ultimately be in NATO. Now, uh, the voices that are opposing to Ukraine joining NATO and have been from the start, also the types of voices that you hear opposing funding, what we call the war in Ukraine or sending right. more ammunition, weapons, F-16s, the type of that. Um, what concerns you about the upcoming US election, the way that that could change things in terms of the voices that call for ceding territory of Ukraine or stopping sending weapons? Yeah, it's, it's a tough one to say. You know, you have um, former President Trump, uh, Vivek Ramaswamy out there saying it's terrible, terrible, we should stop supporting Ukraine. Um, you have most of the other Republican candidates and President Biden all strongly in favor of supporting Ukraine. So there's a clear majority in favor of that. Even in the public, there's a majority in favor of that. But it's going to become a rancorous debate. And what I worry about most, I guess, to answer your question, is the White House needs to be more assertive. Uh, they need to explain the U.S. interest, why it is in our interest that Putin be stopped in Ukraine so that we don't have to go elsewhere, and then to do everything possible to help Ukraine win quickly. Uh, we seem to be doling this out you know, one step at a time, and the Ukrainians are paying the price, and it looks as though it is going slowly and badly sometimes, when in fact it could be going better.